Hey Grace, uh, I want to make this video for you because I know from time to time we talk about membership. It comes up as uh, kind of one of the applications in a sermon or it's part of our discussion. And over the years, we get a lot of questions about that. I know it's a, an element that's kind of unique sometimes to Grace and our perspective. So whether you already are a member, you're thinking about membership, or you think membership's stupid, I want to encourage you uh, to maybe just ride with me through the rest of this video and allow me to kind of make an appeal or an explanation. First of all, people will say, well, do you find membership in the Bible? Um, you know, you read through the book of Acts or in other places, do you see anywhere where it mentions they were brought into membership or Paul tells Timothy to, you know, make a roster of the membership? Uh, not, not necessarily, uh, but you do find things that make sense of the membership context. Even from the very beginning in the book of Acts, it talks about how they knew specific numbers of who was added to the church daily. Um, and so they're keeping an idea of who's converted. And those aren't just numbers and figures, those are personalities, right? And so they know directly who is attached uh, to, to those figures. Uh, not only that, but you do see in Paul's instructions to Timothy later for the church in Ephesus, they talk about how they would support uh, the widows in the church. And there is a distinction between those widows who are a part of the church and those who are not. So they had a, an ability to be able to recognize um, who uh, were really part of their fellowship. And that didn't mean, and I think this is something that gets confused a little bit in our American culture, that didn't just mean simply who showed up, who was willing to come to church. Uh, because Paul talks in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians about the fact that the church would be gathered on a Sunday morning and having their worship, and there would be people from the outside who would be coming in to visit. And so you have people attending the church, but yet they're not actually a part of the church. And so uh, that also speaks into the, to the concept and the idea of membership. Um, really, and you've seen this before, and I'll probably show it again a little bit later in the video, but you've probably, possibly seen uh, this diagram before about what we mean by uh, what discipleship looks like for us. It's going to be built on the gospel. Uh, we gather on Sunday mornings or even currently during the pandemic with YouTube and different things. Uh, we do church scattered, which is our, our life groups and also a recognition that we go out and seek to be united. Uh, in our leadership in a biblical model with the goal of reaching the lost in our own personal growth. And you can see all of those things are found in the scripture. People have asked us before, what's our, what's our plan for discipleship? And we would say it's this. It's all of these things together, which I would argue is a membership conversation. Are you uh, interested in entering yourself specifically into that discipleship? So let me just kind of lay out some benefits if you are wondering, well, you know, we kind of live in a culture that says, okay, well, what's in it for me? Why should I consider membership? And coming to Grace for a while, I've grown up here, was born here, whatever it might be, and I don't know that I necessarily need to think about membership. Let me give you a couple of different ways that I think membership can be encouraging. First of all, it is a body of people. It's a collection of fellow believers who are confirming your salvation. They're not changing or ratifying the destiny of your soul. But they are being able to come alongside in those moments when any of us have doubts, uh, begin to have uh, periods of guilt where we're starting to wonder, how could I do what I did? Or I don't know if I really believe certain things fully enough or whatever it might be. But you have a, a body around you who's able to confirm and say, we have heard the gospel message from you. We affirm the gospel message that we've heard from you. And provided you still believe and hold to those things, we, we see you as a, as a part of that with us. That fits right into this concept of discipleship. You've got people coming alongside with you uh, to seek to encourage you, people that are gathering with you, people that are in your life group with you and, and willing to serve with you. Uh, people are going to help you in your mission and in, in your own personal discipleship is all coming from being able to know that commitment that we're talking about a fellow believer who desires to grow in Christ. Sometimes uh, that involves correction. That involves us coming to a place where we're blind to our sin, we don't see our sin, and membership is a tool that's giving other people permission, other members of that body of Christ, the permission to speak into your life and say, brother, sister, I see a, a weak spot. I, I see a blind spot in, in your life right now. And, and I think the Lord would like to address this. And it also protects you.
from just accusations coming because there's a whole process of what that would look like that the church has agreed to go through uh, that seeks to make sure that's not based on preference or based on a person's personal convictions, but it's based upon the word of God. But also, we'll see a flip side of that. Uh, you know, in the number of years here as a church, we've had to go through the, the agonizing uh, difficulty of at times going through discipline and walking somebody through it. And by God's grace, we're able to see people repent in different portions of that. But I've also been able to see situations where uh, people come to a place of recognizing their sin and they are broken about their sin and they repent of their sin. And then they're wondering, but, but do I have a place? Do I have a home? Am I, are people going to be ashamed to associate with me because it's public sin or it gets out or there's no hiding it? And the answer is membership, again, protects you in that. You've got people that have locked arms with you that have said, provided you're repentant of your sin, provided you're taking your sin to the cross and acknowledging the payment of Christ and, and desiring to grow in holiness, we stand by your side whatever the world might say, whatever accusations they may make, or whatever might do to your reputation or our reputation as a church. If you are being faithful to the gospel, even in those moments where you've sinned and fallen, but you respond in gospel ways, and we're going to be we're going to be right by your side. So those are some of the things that are available to you with membership. But I don't think it's fair to just leave it to that question. The question also needs to be, what about others? Why should you consider membership, and how can it benefit other people? One of the conversations we have with membership is being able to serve in ministry. And so you've got different abilities and skills, spiritual gifts that God's given to you, and we desire to express those together as a church body with those who have locked arms with us in membership. And so uh, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ and you're not committed to the local church and you're not serving in any kind of capacity at all, you're, you're squandering gifts that God has given to you and they're not for your benefit. The scriptures are very clear. Those gifts are given for the benefit of others. It also gives you, by being a member, it gives you the ability to affirm other people and confirm them and how you plan to assist them. You know, whether it's um, receiving new elders into our, our fellowship and responding to that, whether it's baby dedications we've done, or even when we do baptisms, we see that as a church celebration because uh, the, the body of Christ is responding to it. And I think about like a baby dedication. Your parents stand up. We pray for the baby, but we're really kind of dedicating that these parents want to raise their child with the instruction of the gospel, and they need the church's help. And at one point in the baby dedication, we have the membership stand up. And it's not to exclude other people, but it's an understanding for those parents of uh, if somebody they've never seen before visiting the church for the very first time, don't know if they're ever going to come back. What encouragement is that really to the parents to just have them kind of willy nilly along with everybody else say, yeah, yeah, we want to help your kid grow in the gospel. But when you have people who have said, no, we put in roots here. We are serving here. We are committed to each other. Then we're coming along and there's, there's actual commitment and faces to that. And so membership allows you to do that for other people. Look at somebody during those moments and say, Hey, I'm, I'm here and I'll, I'll be here for you. I want to consider this is kind of a benefit for you and a benefit for other people. Membership causes you to be in a committed relationship with other people that you may not otherwise have committed to. They don't have the same interests in you. They're definitely a different personality than yours. You may just have never crossed paths otherwise. But this brings us back to the beauty of the gospel is what brings us together and unites us together. And so it, it gives us an opportunity both for someone else to know that you're there by their side because of the gospel, but also stretches you and grows you in the gospel being the center of your love toward other people. And so that's kind of a development of both. I want to hit one more before we talk about the last one. And this is, it does benefit leadership. I know this feels a little self-serving as one of the elders here at Grace. But I think even during the season of the pandemic, when it hit, we're trying to figure out, okay, how do we connect with people? How do we make sure those who call Gringo Grace their home are, are truly being reached and cared for and connected with? And we're not looking to exclude anybody, but you suddenly got to look and go, well, there's people that have shown up that have not given us contact information. So I don't know how we're going to reach out to them, but we can at least start with saying, well, who are the people that have said they're committed to grace? And so membership greatly serves your elders. 
Hebrews 13, if you remember just a couple months ago, we were in Hebrews, talked about uh, that you're, you're going to obey your leaders and make it a joy for them to do ministry. And uh, membership is one of the ways that does that uh, because it, it allows the elders to know uh, who is truly committing to the body and who ultimately we're going to stand before God and answer for. And I personally don't want to try and answer for all of Dark County or all of the Miami Valley, but I do want to be able to answer for those whom God has given to us and said, this is, this is our body, this is our, our group. Uh, it also helps further than mission and growth. Uh, we can know the heartbeat of the church and the personalities God's brought and the passions that we might have. It allows us with our budget to be able to figure out what kind of missionaries we support and, and how we can move forward in endeavors, what kind of church plants can come down the road. And, and membership helps us be able to kind of know, okay, this is who we are and this is where we can potentially go. And so it's a great service to the leaders of the church as well. But here's the last one I want to hit. Uh, I think coming out of this pandemic, we are now hitting a season where we're going to be reconsidering and thinking about what mission might look like. And our mission is not really that complicated. In fact, it wasn't that long ago I was in a meeting with somebody and they, they just said, you know, one of the things they love about Greenville Grace is that it's gloriously unromantic. And I thought if that didn't ruin the idea of exactly what I was saying, I'd love for that to kind of be the byline of a business card, right? Greenville Grace, gloriously unromantic. Because it's not rocket science. We're not trying to invent something new. This isn't complicated at all. Again, just to bring your attention to it and look at it, the, this chart here of what discipleship looks like, it's not really anything complicated. The church got together and the church would go out. They were based upon the gospel. There's a biblical form of leadership that draws that together and makes decisions and helps shepherd and know and protect and feed the sheep. And our goal then, is to reach the lost and see other people added to the fold and for each and every one of us to grow in our holiness. You know, I think sometimes the emphasis of outreach becomes simply evangelism and we miss the fact that it's actually calling for discipleship. So in a way, uh, none of us exit the phase of outreach. We are constantly wanting to grow in our discipleship, but also the beauty of it is it brings new people into it. And I think one of the things to consider is what outreach really looks like. It doesn't need to be a, a massive program. It doesn't have to be that we're adding like a wave pool in the back of the church that's gonna try and get people or a really impressive program. Jesus said it was this in John 13, 35, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. I think there's a, an ability with membership to be able to say, well, we can have a robust relationship with one another based upon the gospel. It's not just that we like each other, but that we are committed to each other. And we are committed to each other in the good times. We're committed to each other in the hard times. We're committed to each other when we enjoy each other. We're committed to each other when we're struggling with each other. And it would look different to the world. So the world says, wait a minute, I don't, I don't see that in our culture. I mean, don't we, we see that right now? Like, very fickle. We're on board with certain things, and all it takes is one wrong tweet, one wrong blog post, one wrong endorsement of something, one wrong t-shirt that you're wearing, and next thing you know, you're isolated, and removed, and shamed, and discarded. And we have the ability as people who still struggle with sin, but know what it's like to be reconciled to Christ, to model that by being reconciled to others. And man, I think this is such a beautiful time for us to move forward in this phase because I think, if anything, COVID-19 has helped people realize just how desperately they need community. The greatest introvert in the world may have thought the beginning of shelter in place sounded like a, a glorious mandate. But as it continues to go on, you realize God has made us for relationships. He has made us to connect. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have forever eternally been in a beautiful relationship. And we're made in the image of God. So we are made to interact and commune with one another. And the world doesn't quite understand that. And they're going to be craving it. And so I think one of the things that we have the opportunity to do is if we have real, robust, committed gospel-fueled, Jesus-focused relationships with each other that I think are even 
modeled best by this membership model, it gives us the opportunity to, to display that for the world and invite the world as well. Our membership's never supposed to be something that's just, I, we're not looking for a specific number that we will close it off then, right? We're wanting to look at other people and go, you know what you've been longing for? Longing to connect with each other, connect with people on something that's real. Man, it can't get any more real than Jesus. And it's because that's what you were designed for, is to become part of the family of God through Jesus Christ. So that's why membership matters. Um, here's what I want to do and encourage you. We're going to be offering our next Welcome to Grace class. There's going to be links on how you can register for it and be able to sign up for it. It's going to be July 26th, August 9th, and August 23rd. And so hopefully that gives you time to be preparing for it and work your schedule out to be able to make it. We encourage people to try and make it to two out of the three weeks at least because that'll give you a good enough glimpse of who we are as a church, vision for membership, our mission together, what you would be locking arms into. And I want you to encourage you to consider. And so if you're, you're interested, sign up. If you still don't get this membership thing, you're like, why in the world would Danny make a 20 minute video on this? Why does this matter so much? Show up for three more weeks and hear about it. If you're kicking the tires on Greenville Grace and you're like, I just kind of want to find out more about this church. This is the best way to do it. We say we're kind of like giving you, I think of like cell phone contracts, right? You slide the paper across because there's all this fine, small print at the bottom. We want to get rid of all of that. So we want to be able to say, hey, come on those evenings, ask every question, search every nook and cranny, try and really find out who we are, because we want you committed to a local church. And if it's not Greenville Grace, we want you committed to somewhere else, because we believe that's God's discipleship model for believers. And so we want to help assist you in that. So sign up and consider coming. Many of you have taken the Welcome to Grace class over the years, and somewhere in the phase of having taken the class, you haven't followed up with contacting an elder and saying, hey, let's move forward with this idea of membership. We tell you in the class, we're not going to hunt you down. We're not going to corner you. We're not going to pin you down. And to this date, we haven't. Uh, but I really want to encourage you, um, help us and help Greenville Grace and our mission as we move forward out of this COVID-19 phase that our mission could be even more fueled. If you've been kicking around the idea of membership and taking the class and you just not move forward, there's no better time to move forward than now. And so I'd encourage you, or if you're married, you and your spouse, to pray about it and talk about it. And let's move forward in that and lock arms with those who, who truly want to lock arms. And if there's something really holding you up about joining Greenville Grace and our mission and joining with us together, let's have a conversation about that too. Because like I said, we want to want to move you onto a place where you can lock in. Uh, we don't want to leave you in this phase of just kind of floating around forever. And lastly, there's 200 of you who might be watching this video right around that who are members of Greenville Grace. And what I want to do for you is just allow this video to remind you uh, you didn't reach the finish line when you signed a membership covenant and said, okay, fine, became a member. You entered into the discipleship program, right? And so you might be a member, but we can be good members or we can be delinquent members. And so I want to encourage you, don't grow slack on remembering that you've entered into a discipleship plan with other people. And if you need help, ask for help. If you know of others who need help, Seek to help them out. Look for ways to be able to serve and minister together with us. Uh, join in in that mission. Uh, let's love one another deeply and sincerely so that the world can know that we're his disciples. So when I'm given a sermon in the future and you hear me kind of make some sort of application toward membership, just know there's a 20-minute video that could just start to be the tip of the iceberg and saying, why do we take this so seriously? Why is it an issue Grace brings up all the time? Hopefully, what you hear is we value membership because we love Jesus, we love you, and we love the lost. And we want to see all of us grow in a deeper and greater knowledge of God's glory. Love you guys.